it's Kales, and today I'm doing the book courtship tag. Why? Because I want to, and because I think I have very interesting answers to these questions, and it's another tag video, so yay, why not? I wasn't actually tagged by anyone, but a Booktopia did the thing where she was like, if you're watching this video and want to do this tag, then you can do this tag. So I'm gonna say that I was tagged by Sasha at a Booktopia. Let's get on with it, shall we? <laughs> It's hard for me to actually remember this, so I'm going with one of my recent buys. And this book is called Time Bound by Risa Walker. I bought this because it was gorgeous, and then I read that it was Amazon's Breakthrough Novel Award winner, and then I read the summary and it sounded really interesting. This girl named Katie gets this medallion from her grandmother who talks about time travel with her, and then this mysterious murder happens and Katie gets wrapped into this swirl of time travel and political stuff, and recently I've been on a time traveling kick. I'm reading the Ruby Red series currently, which is also about time travel, and I've been watching Outlander with my mom, which is also about time travel, and I've been listening to the Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, so I'm a little wrapped up in time travel right now, so I don't know when I'm gonna get to this book, if I'm gonna continue on that kick, or if it's gonna stop before I get there. Hopefully not, because it sounds really interesting, and I'm very excited. Plus, it's just gorgeous. Look at that with the swirls and the Capitol building, and the... I... I... I think it's really pretty. Mostly I buy books based off their summary, so for me this is kind of a hard pick, but I'm trying to remember like really memorable summaries that were just like, oh my gosh, I have to get this book like now. But that happens to me so often. I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak. I Am the Messenger is this fantastic fantastic novel. Ed Kennedy is an underage cab driver without much of a future. He's pathetic at playing cards, hopelessly in love with his best friend, Audrey, and utterly devoted to his coffee-drinking dog, the doorman, who is one of my favorite characters in the whole book. His life is one of peaceful routine and incompetence, until he inadvertently stops a bank robbery. That's when the first ace arrives in the mail. That's when Ed becomes the messenger. Chosen to care, he makes his way through town helping and hurting when necessary until only one question remains. Who's behind Ed's mission? The writing, it just breaks all the walls and meta and it's so smart. It's so good. It's captivating. But also, the first line of this book, the gunman is useless. I know it. He knows it. The whole bank knows it. Even my best mate Marvin knows it and he's more useless than the gunman. Pick this book up. Please read it if you haven't already. It's one of my favorites. I would argue that it's better than the book thief. Shh. I didn't say that. Don't. What? I have two answers for these. When I think of really great writing, I think of very smart writing. I love smart books. These two show their smarts in two very different ways. Lamb, The Gospel According to Biff, Christ's Childhood Friends by Christopher Moore and Codex by Lev Grossman. Most people have heard of Lev Grossman from his Magician series, which is kind of YA? I would argue it's not. A lot of people say it is, but I'm like, I don't really think so. It's very adult. I'm finishing the third one, as many of you know if you've been watching these. I'm trying really hard to finish the third one. This book follows around this man, Edward, who somehow gets wrapped up into this woman's library where he starts, like, cataloging it. He gets sent on this search for a codex. It is not a YA novel, but that's okay. I still think it's really smart and intelligent and it was one of those books that I got to the end of it, and no spoilers, but I got to the end of it and I was like, what the heck? What? And I chucked the book across the room. Then it took me 10 minutes. And I sat there and I couldn't stop thinking about it for 10 minutes. And holy crap, believe it or not, I got it. I got the point of the ending, I got the point of the book, and it was so brilliant and mind-boggling, I was like, Oh my gosh, he's brilliant! Very quickly, Lev Grossman became one of my favorite authors. The second book that I have in this category is Lamb, The Gospel According to Biff, Christ's Childhood Friend, which is just <laughs> hilarious. I'm sorry to cuss, but it is. And there's many cuss words in this book, too. Again, not really a YA novel, but so smart. It's just lighthearted, but fun, and greatly philosophical, and just awesome. Author's blessing, he calls it. This is my favorite part. If you've come to these pages for laughter, may you find it. If you are here to be offended, may your ear rise and your blood boil. If you seek adventure, may this story sing you away to blissful escape. If you need to test or confirm your beliefs, may you reach comfortable conclusions. All books reveal perfection by what they are or what they are not. May you find 
that which you seek in these pages or outside them. May you find perfection and know it by name. It's also a lot more hilarious than that. It's a parody on the Gospels. It's wonderful, laugh out loud, funny, but also makes you think. And to me, that is a mark of a fantastic writer. I've read a lot of series in my life, many series. I have many, many favorites. However, there was one series that my friend Gunny was telling me that I really needed to read back like sophomore year of college, and it was the Dresden Files series. And so finally I caved and bought Stormfront, and oh my gosh, there's like 14 books in this series and there's gonna be like 25 of them. This series isn't gonna finish until I'm in my 30s, so trust me, now that I've started it, I am wholly 100% dedicated to reading the series and just seeing it through, man. It's about a wizard detective in Chicago named Harry Dresden. It's amazingly written because you think it can't get any more complicated and then it does and yet you're invested the whole time and you just want all the good things and yet Ah, and a great introduction to a wonderful series that I will be reading for the majority of my life. For this answer, I had a different book, but then I realized I loaned it out to my aunt, and that was Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard, which is awesome. So I, that book is great. You should go check that one out too. But the other book that I read, like, the next day in the space of a night was Isla and the Happily Ever After. It's a quick read. It's not that many pages. It's a little over 300, I think. It is the last in a sort of trilogy. They don't really all connect until this book. It follows around this girl named Isla as she has the hots for this guy, Josh, at her school. She's just so happy. Yay. It's like a really good rom-com wrapped up in a book. Okay, the book that I cannot stop thinking about is a weird one. And I say this because not a lot of people that I know in my life have read this book, and a lot of people that I know in my life that have read this book don't like this book. But I can't stop thinking about it because so help me goodness I want to turn it into a movie, and I'll explain why in a minute. The book is called Every Day by David Levithan. I am a coin toss when it comes to David Levithan's book. I really like them or I really dislike them, and this one I really like. It's about an entity named A. And A is neither a guy nor a girl, or we don't really know what he is. I call him a he. He wakes up every day in the body of someone different. He wakes up in the body of this juice bag, Justin, who is dating this girl, Rhiannon, and then A instantly falls in love with Rhiannon, and then uses his powers to try and get back to her. What's fascinating about this book to me, and why I can't stop thinking about it, is because I want to turn it into a movie, because I think it could be a very beautiful movie and a fascinating acting experiment for a lot of people. It would be fascinating for these actors who have to all play A, because he is a boy or a girl, black, white, doesn't matter. To continue the storyline for all these different actors to play the same character at different points in the story. And then for Rhiannon, who at different points in the story has to fall in and out of love with him and like try and convince herself that this is still A, I think it would be awesome and a wonderful experiment to try cinematically. So I can't stop thinking about it because I keep wanting to turn it into a film. Okay, this book is really soft. It has a funny cover to it and the letters are popped out. It's called In the After by Demetria Lunetta. And I actually met her randomly in Chicago once, um, but I love the way that the cover feels. It's really soft, which is not really indicative of this book. This is a post-apocalyptic YA novel that follows around a girl named Amy who looks after this child named Baby as they survive this alien invasion and try and survive. I've talked about this book several hundred times, so I feel like that this is a very obvious answer. Anita Diamond's Day After Night. I adapted this book into a play. I've read it several times. It's sticky noted and annotated and signed and very well loved. This book centers around four Jewish women after World War II, directly after World War II, in 1945 in a d displaced persons camp called Atleet. Displaced persons camps is where the British put the Jews when they didn't know what to do with them and they didn't have any papers. They weren't like concentration camps. Um, they had beds and food and clothes and stuff, uh, but they were still fenced in. It's a great story about friendship and survival. Finally, this question seems very obvious about what series I would read over and over and over again. That's the Harry Potter series, y'all. I love this series. It's hard to be a reader of my generation and not love this series. That's okay if you don't. No hate. I have people that I love dearly in my life that haven't read it. We're gonna change that if we can. But to save you from another rant about Harry Potter, I'm going to instead talk about the Shakespeare Steeler series, which is a trilogy by Gary Blackwood. It starts with Shakespeare Steeler, then goes to Shakespeare Scribe, 
and eventually Shakespeare's Spy. These three books are about a young boy named Widge who is an orphan and somehow gets wrapped up in Shakespeare's company by trying to steal the script Hamlet. I actually read it over and over again because it's a uh, middle reader series that I love, so it's an easy read, and I love this time period, and I love this story, because if I were Widge, I would be so happy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is my book courtship tag. I'm gonna do the same thing that Sasha did and tag anybody else that watches this video that wants to make a video. Or, better yet, if you are not one for making videos, then go ahead and leave some of your answers in the comments below to some of the questions. I'd love to have a discussion with you guys about some of these odd courtship questions and your answers to them. It'd be fun to see how different they are. Until next time, guys. Bye. What is it with me and wizards and reading for my life? First, it, And they're both named Harry. What's that about?